Folks keep moving into these high-risk areas and they keep rebuilding in these high-risk areas. Is it worth it? Especially when a lot of us pick up the tab for it. Jay Lair says it is time to cool it or pay more for it. He's with the Heartland Institute. Uh, Jay, the bottom line is we are seeing a lot more of this. And you say what? That, that if folks choose to live in these kind of areas, they pay for it themselves? Absolutely. And Neil, I think the San Diego firefighters have done a, an amazing job in uh, limiting damage to uh, these huge fires that are happening this year. If you go back to 2003, they burned over 400 square miles. Uh, they were much better in the fires of 2007, and they're doing a great job now. But the public should not have to be paying for it. I believe in uh, education before regulation, but a certain amount of regulation is needed if people want to live in a high-risk area. And limiting damage from these fires when people want to build out into wooded areas uh, could be reduced dramatically in, in three ways. One. Uh, the part of the building code should be that you have to clear cut around your house, I'd say 10 or 15 yards so that fires cannot easily uh, jump to your house and that the firefighters can get in and have an area to, to work in. Uh, secondly, if you live in these areas, you should be paying a, a much greater tax to pay for fire prevention and uh, pr fire protection. If you want to live there, you should be allowed to live there, but you have to pay. Thirdly, the building code should require uh, fire retardant, fire resistant roofs that are a few thousand dollars more expensive. But if uh, they don't pay it, uh, you and I and oh, every other taxpayer is going to pay it, uh, as you point out. We shouldn't have to pay these extra fees when people want to live in high risk areas, but we shouldn't prevent them from living in these areas either. But, you know, there are so many high risk areas when you talk about just in the, in the south and being exposed to tornadoes and hurricanes and uh, up along the, the West Coast, mudslides and the like. And, and, and much of the, the, the Midwest, of course, that experiences its own bout of bad weather. By that definition, a lot of areas are, are a lot risky. So what do you do? Well, I think uh, here in Ohio, we have uh, rivers, we have floodplain areas, and no one's allowed to build a permanent structure uh, on a 100-year floodplain, which essentially is a flood that uh, has a 1% chance of happening in every year. And there are uh, high-risk areas that we definitely can uh, disallow uh, the building of permanent structures or people living there. Uh, certainly uh, earthquake slide areas, there, there might be regulations, but certainly not in the San Diego fire area. I mean, you would be moving people out of any forest area. I don't think that should be d done. But if the risk is high enough, absolutely, we should zone people out no, of that No, no, you area. raise a number of very good ideas, Dan, including if you're going to live in a risk area, should higher taxes be associated with that to pay for, uh, you know, firefighters and, and, and authorities that have to tend to, to, to those high risky areas. Um, but in the case of clearing property, let's say, uh, I, I know there was a rule with standing in San Marcos, I understand, for new construction that you had to clear 100 feet around the property of any brush or something that could light up. But if Santa Ana winds are coming at you 60, 70 miles an hour, they've discovered that even that isn't enough. So what do you do? I mean, if you have to constantly revise and update these, these building standards. Well, I think you do exactly that. You are constantly revising and updating them. I think a 100-foot clear cut is a little uh, too aggressive. And, and well, that's what it don't... is. That's what it is. And, and, and now you're right. A lot of them ignored that. Um, and that while this was encouraged for new construction, they did tell existing home in, homeowners, you know, you might want to consider doing the same, but it wasn't an edict. No, generally, they, when they pass these kind of regulations, they grandfather people right. in, and I think uh, that is wrong. I mean, you pass a new rule, we, you can prove that uh, other taxpayers that are not enjoying your property are paying for you to live there, and I think the time comes that we stop grandfathering and say, look, uh, uh, abide by the law or move out. All right. Jay, thank you very much. Shay Lair.